All right there, ladies and gents, how is it going? I am out on my, yes, my Yamaha XSR 900 GP. Oh, I have had this bike for about 470 miles, just over a week now, and uh, I thought it was about time I gave you my first impressions of this motorcycle. Now, this motorcycle impressions thing is uh, purely my opinions, so you might not agree, you might be wrong. You might be right, but I'm right because it's my opinion. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> uh, but what that means is that uh, I will be talking about this bike in uh, conjunction with my dimensions, my likes, my experience and all that sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, just before we get into it, uh, a little bit about me. I've been riding for over 30 years. I've had well over 30 motorcycles, currently have four, including this one. And uh, yeah, yeah, I love bike. I love bike. I love bike. I love bike. And I love road bikes, sports bikes, track bikes, dirt bikes, adventure bikes, cruisers even, although I've never had one. But I have had a custom, custom motor good seat. Um, but yes, bike is my life. I love them. So uh, I've got a little bit of experience, but it's not necessarily the same as yours. So yes, take what I say here with whatever pinch of salt you like. Uh, but yes, I am five foot six. I've got a 29 inch inseam, and uh, I, currently, currently, I tend to wear more urban stuff out on the bikes. Uh, so uh, what I wear and stuff like that may affect my opinion on different things on this bike like the uh, comfort levels and stuff but currently urban stuff uh, any talk of comfort will be in relation to what i wear there and keep that bike a side down right then well seeing as we are in a 30 limit and that is important when you're talking about first impressions of a motorcycle let's start this review with a little bit about its slow speed manners now i'm in third gear doing roughly 2,000 RPM, 20 odd mile an hour, or 20 mile an hour, and uh, the bike is absolutely fine at this speed, at this revs, and it tugs away quite nicely. Still running the engine in mine, so I don't really want to lug it, um, but yes, it is quite happy down in the low revs. But yes, comfort-wise at 30, well, even 20 mile an hour, this bike is absolutely fine, but you do need to have a little bit of a stomach muscle. I've only got one, I don't have a six pack, I have a one pack, and, uh, and even that's a bit floppy and soggy. Um, so uh, yes, yes. Uh, it is a sporty riding position and that means that you do need to have a little bit of a core muscle going on and uh, just uh, be able to hold that weight off your wrist a little bit because uh, it does have clip on bars and but don't be mistaken by the fact that they're above the top yoke there that doesn't mean that they're in a ergonomically comfortable position they're just more comfortable than some other sports bikes it's definitely a sporty riding position so you do need to get that weight off your wrist to be comfortable at 30 mile an hour but it will do that absolutely fine all day long and as long as uh, your stomach muscles hold up you'll be absolutely dandy once you get out onto uh, more sort of open roads like we're here national 60 mile an hour limit uh, it all makes a little bit more sense the wind blast sort of pulls you back and uh, takes the weight off your wrists even more and uh, reduces the fatigue on your stomach muscles so uh, generally it is quite a comfortable place and place up at the 60 mile an hour limits and, and above as you go faster and faster you might find that you want to tuck in a little bit more and then uh, your head will get in some turbulent air but when you're going head banging speeds you, you tend to expect your head to bang a bit don't you uh, but at 60 mile an hour 70 mile an hour limits when you're sitting up like this not in a racing tuck it's a lovely lovely position to be in talking of riding positions i've already mentioned the uh, the bars and stuff like that uh, the seat and knees and feet type thing uh, with my 29 inch inseam being built in mind here it's absolutely fine for me you can lower the pegs a little bit they've got one slot that you can take them down on uh, i've not experimented with that this is a first impressions thing um, but i don't really think i need to but it does mean if you've got a slightly longer leg than me um, and you're slightly less flexible or whatever that you might find that that's a benefit and i think it's a nice touch that that is included in the design of this bike i don't find the knee bend particularly extreme um but it is it is a sporty position i've got a suzuki gsx 8s as well currently and that is a, a more gentle knee position i imagine it will probably be very similar to this one if the pegs were in the lower position uh, but having them up higher means that you get a little bit more ground clearance and uh, that obviously is going to help with handling once you're going on a bit faster 
the bike comes with a full up and down quick shifter it's a third generation quick shifter and it means that you can kind of change up or down whether you're on or off the throttle but it is a lot smoother than the more basic one on my gsx 8s and that is a good thing but i do miss the the noise that the 8s used to make on upshifts this doesn't seem to do it it's that slick it's that slick going down the box on this obviously is a far more civilized thing and that really shows the extra technology on the downshift quick shifter side of things or blip or whatever you call them it's got all the cornering imus and stuff like that i've not yet really experienced much need for them but i am running in uh, it does have cruise control for me that is a must-have on any motorcycle i'm going to be taking seriously because I, I, I have a shoulder injury personally but i just think any ride by wire bike should have cruise control it's literally just a bit of software uh, so yeah cruise control is a welcome addition on this um when you you think about the price range of the bike it's not a cheap bike but there are other bikes in the price range which don't have that stuff currently so looking down at the dash there i've uh, actually got that in my not preference for view i'm just experimenting on the different themes it's got just seeing what they all look like i really like the more retro one which has got a big, big rev counter uh, but i'm just uh, sort of working my way through seeing which one is my actual favorite but uh, the default one, the one with the retro rev counter, uh, I think looks great. Uh, but I always prefer a darker dash like I've got here. I mean, I turn the brightness right down and um, I like it minimal. I only want the information I'm interested in being prominent. The other stuff I just want to be able to see if you need to, but not be distracted by it if you don't. Um, so yeah, it's got an auto day night mode if you want it. It's also got uh, fix it to day mode, which would be the white mode, or fix it to night mode, which would be the dark mode, like that. Um, and I've also turned the brightness right down on it. Uh, like I say, there are other themes on there. Um, and it's got a funky little thing where you can have your navigation on the screen there, and it's a proper map, uh, which is a nice thought if it worked better. Unfortunately, it doesn't work better. Yeah, basically Yamaha have teamed up with Garmin and got a Garmin app to work through your phone onto the dashboard which gives you a map and then you can have your turn by turn directions beam to your ears and all that sort of stuff which in theory is a fantastic idea and I love having the map on the dashboard I really do uh, I just don't find it very well implemented and I would much rather just if they they just mirrored what was on my mobile screen so you just uh, pair it up and whatever navigation app you wanted it would just use that i don't know if there's a way to do that i've not investigated yet yeah so uh, i'm not a fan of the implementation of the garmin app i just uh, am a fan of the thought of it the concept of it so i'm hoping there'll be either some updates to the garmin or there'll be some updates to uh, yamaha um, firmware and stuff to make it implement better and look nicer and just be more useful and uh, user friendly but congratulations for giving it a go even if you didn't do it very well uh, but i blame garmin on that one more than yamaha really it's th it's their app that's the problem not not the yamaha app uh, i can connect the dash up to my phone and that means you can program like the rider modes and stuff like that and that's one of the things i've done there you see hippo 2 that's one of the custom maps you can rename them which i quite like um, so i've got hippo on my dashboard awesome it does have multiple modes i am a fan of rider modes uh, i know a lot of you think that they're rubbish uh, but all the tech on motorbikes is not a bad thing you just got to accept a bit of change in your life things move on you know um, at least we're not on electric bikes yet <laughs> so i think we've kind of covered uh, riding position what the bike's like in town and at speed i've not really talked about how well it handles it, trust me it handles amazingly can't do much of that handling malarkey while stuck behind traffic like we are here in a no overtaking area um, with a restricted speed limit and stuff uh, but yes yes if I get on an open road with twiddles and fun and joy with no cars in front we'll cut some of that in here just to show where this bike really does excel it's right here working on the edge of the tires oh yes sorry I can't show you a huge amount of this but rest assured it's pretty rapid going through your favorite set of twisties 
um, but otherwise uh, yeah trust me it handles delightfully and the tyres on it I think they're Battle Axe 23s I don't know what that means um, but they're a new tyre and I think uh, they're, they're very good I've no idea how well they'll last but as far as a sporty tyre goes they tip in quite quickly which I like and uh, they grip 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 talking of grip and again going back to the uh, rider aids the ABS on this when you've got cold tyres or at least when the bike was brand new I found very in, in, invasive uh, the rear would certainly activate a little prematurely and the front did an occasion too but what I put that down to is um, possibly cold tyres which meant that they didn't have as much grip um, but more likely I put it down to the fact that the suspension was very new back then and it does take a few miles for brand new bikes to bed in and settle down a little bit my Aprilia uh, settled down probably an inch on the suspension obviously that's an adventure bike with more bouncy tra longer travel suspension uh, but yeah this has settled down and I, I feel even the, the, the ride height uh, for my feet to get on the floor is, is a lot easier now so yes the suspension softened up a little bit and uh, the ABS became a little less invasive after that I think um, and certainly once the tires warm up I've had uh, no issues with it really but what that means is that uh, you've just got to give it a little while and that's the trouble with these first impressions videos the bike's brand new when you get it so it has all got to bed in a little bit doesn't it it's all got to bed in um, but this bike very much is a delight to ride in fact it's almost too much of a delight to ride I am going to get to my 600 mile service point well before when it's booked in for a service <laughs> so I might see if uh, p &H motorcycles can uh, adjust the date of that service uh, but I don't know I don't know if they're going to be able to but it'd be nice if they can when discussing the handling of a motorcycle you really do have to discuss the brakes and since we've been talking about the ABS as well anyway it's sort of timely uh, the front brake on this is immense it is immense uh, certainly compared to the GSX AS I've got and uh, my pretty well it's got adventure bike brakes which are never going to be as uh, sharp as a sports bike brake um, but yeah the brakes on this are delightful really really reassuring the lever even on its shortest uh, span is a little bit far out because I've got short fingers um, but there's so much power in that front brake I, I'm just using my fingertips to brake and it, it's plenty I mean I can emergency stop on a, a, a two finger brake with this um, yes yes there is more brake than you need <laughs> which is good I like more brake than I need I do think the sign of a good front brake on a motorcycle is one that you can use it as predictively gently as you can predictively when you really need it when you really want to stop quickly and uh, this is definitely showing the quality of the brakes I'm sure there are uh, far more modern far more impressive stuff out there uh, that do the job far better on the more cutting edge sports bikes uh, but what this has is a lot of brake and it's a lot of nice and it's a lot of lot of good um, words they're my strong point right <laughs> I have put a few tanks of fuel through this now and uh, is probably going to be the downside to the bike not that it's a huge downside um, but yeah uh, it's only got a 14 litre tank fuel light comes on it seems at about 11 litres used so uh, that does give you a reasonable amount left to go and find a petrol station um, the last tank I filled up with uh, I'd better get down to or I needed 12 and a half litres to fill it so um, that got me about 160, 165 miles which does sound like plenty but bear in mind that I am riding this in a running in phase at the moment so I'm not using uh, more than 50% of the revs and I'm being a bit more gentle on the throttle than I might be um, if it was running and I'm certainly, certainly going slower so uh, the cruise control on this is a really lovely feature I know I've sort of mentioned about it before and how I find it a necessity for me for a bike which I want to sit on for a longer period of time but it really is so nice to be able to rest your right arm even on a shorter run even on a shorter run and uh, yeah why not fit it to the bikes they can have it eh so manufacturers wake it up fit it to all your ride by wire motorcycles please thank you what a glorious day 
Uh, okay, so um, we've covered the knee triangle, we've covered the body position and uh, how comfortable it is, including the saddle, handlebars, a little bit about the switch gear. Um, oh, talking to the switch gear, it's got a fancy old indicator thing. So in the olden days, you pushed right, right if you wanted to go right, and then you centered it, and then you pushed left if you wanted to go left, and then you centered it to turn it off. Then they went to push to cancel, so you'd push it left to go left, and then you'd push it inwards to cancel it, and the same right to go right, and then inwards to cancel it, um, or forwards to cancel it. Uh, and uh, now on this one here, they've changed it again. So now we've got a, uh, there's no one behind me, um, a short push on there, gives you three flashes of your indicator. And a short push right, gives you three flashes right, and then it just stops. So it's quite handy if you want to do a quick overtake or something like that. And then a hard push to uh, go right, and then push to cancel in the same direction. Um, which takes a little bit again used to, although I, I found it quite intuitive. And the same to go left, a hard push to go left, and then uh, push to cancel it. Um, yeah, it's just a little adjustment, but I really like that little three push, um, or the half push thing that gets you three flashes. I really like that. It does also auto cancel after a period of time. Um, I'm not sure on the exact time duration for all that, um, but generally it's normally well beyond what you need it to be uh, so it's just quite handy if you do forget to cancel your indicator it gets rid of it but it's not a uh, uh, once you straighten up out of the corner it doesn't auto cancel then so while we're stuck here at this blooming level crossing that takes seven years to open and a train that's not even moving um, right so I can with my 29 inch inseam I can get one foot down easily on this if I just slide off the saddle just a little bit to one side not fully off it not even a whole butt cheek um, and then I can flat foot one foot I am tiptoes if I've got both feet down um, but it's 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 certainly manageable the thing I find awkward is the position of the foot pegs um, with one foot like this it's actually good because I can rest the foot peg against me so it stops the bike rolling backwards um, but if I've got two feet down uh, the foot pegs are kind of where I want my feet to be for balance um, but yeah that's that that's that uh, yes right let's get moving again when they decide to open these silly gates right so I guess the uh, next thing to do is to get pulled over and uh, give you a little walk around of the motorcycle and maybe uh, then do some kind of close out or summary or something or other um, but yes yes right let's get down to the West Beach cafe and uh, get that done so this this is the Yamaha XSR 900 GP and it's pretty much all standard apart from a couple of stickers that I've shoved on I've put those Delta box ones on on the frame there for a bit of retro coolness and um, yeah obviously got my channel stuff up on the screen there um, but yeah it's all standard all standard and I think 99.99% of it looks absolutely incredible and there's some good attention to detail and stuff like that um, I absolutely love this single seat unit um, type thing uh, I do wish that modern bikes had a bit more of a bum on them though kind of like they did back in the day um, but it's the style of things these days even with the retro to have these uh, sticky outy things on the back I will probably put a tail tidy on the back just because this is a uh, sunny day only bike for me so I don't need that rain protection or anything like that um, but uh, if I did want to take a passenger this comes off and you've got pidion seats there like that which is quite good and I guess if you wanted to go anywhere on it you could take that seat cover off and uh, put a saddlebag on there or something like that um, which would give you some kind of luggage capacity um, but it's not really that sort of a bike uh, one of the things I dislike but also do like is the uh, bar end mirrors um, they stick out a long way although actually compared to an adventure bike they're not too bad um, but I have um, knocked one of them when filtering um, yeah unfortunately uh, didn't do any damage or anything like that but it just goes to show that uh, the bike is quite wide with them um, but they do work very well um, but the position is not very natural for me although uh, on my V7 I had bar end mirrors on that um, I didn't really use them they were just more of a formality whereas on here because they are 
quite prominent you do tend to use them but it's it's quite a look from looking where you're going down to the uh, the mirror itself um, but when you do do it they do adjust and uh, uh, do look very good I love the little bits of detail like uh, the Zeus fasteners and stuff like that and up here you've got the pins for holding on the fairing upper and all that sort of stuff um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a cracker. I've not ridden it at night yet to find out how good the headlight is, uh, but um, I'm sure I will at some point. But I tend not to ride at night unless I get caught out. It is a bit of a fly magnet. I don't know whether that's the yellow or just the season. Um, the last few years we've not had an awful lot of bugs in the sky, so uh, maybe I'm just noticing it more because uh, this year we seem to have a lot more bugs, which is a good thing. I like bugs. I just don't like them on my visor or on my motorcycle. Uh, the exhaust is a bit meh. Um, it sounds great, but it could do with a little bit more volume. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the Acapro that you can get as a factory option um, is uh, no more noisy. You can't take the baffles out without getting a Dremel out. And it's also got a catalytic converter, which you can't remove. Uh, not a problem if you just want the aesthetic. But I think most people change their exhaust folks. They want a bit more character from the engine, a bit more noise. Um, so, uh, yeah, you could buy that one and be a bit disappointed. Or you could go direct to Akaprovic and buy their exhaust pipe for this bike, which is exactly the same, just isn't black. It's uh, just bare metal. Um, and that's got a removable catalytic converter and baffle. Um, and it's also cheaper. I also like that this comes with a, a little hugger there um, which stops a lot of the crap going up at the rear suspension. I do wish my Suzuki had something like that um, but yeah yeah it's what it is. I guess that's the difference between an £8,000 bike and a, a £12,500 bike. Um, I like the fact we've got rubber on the foot pegs there because I do feel a little bit of a tingle from the handlebars um, certainly at the mid-range revs that this bike is I'm sure the foot pegs would vibrate a bit without them so that's that's nice to help make it a more pleasant riding experience um, I love the colour I absolutely love the colour that red really pops and the, the yellow does too in the right light um, yeah it's it's cracking the camera doesn't necessarily pick it up properly but trust me this is one lovely paint job one absolutely gorgeous paint job so the rear light is quite neat I quite like that um, it just sort of sticks down there uh, yeah I haven't really looked at it properly before but yeah it does the job um, so if I did a tail tidy on that um, it would uh, look even better I think uh, but yeah yeah there's not really an awful lot else to say you either love these retro style bikes or you don't and I very much love the era of these retro bikes and I love the look of this one um, and it matches my channel colors too so bonus 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 it's like the bike was designed for me uh, but anyway, if you are looking for a more in-depth review of this bike, there are some out there, obviously. Uh, but once I've got it run in and a few more miles under my belt, I will do a more in-depth review and I'll get more camera angles and stuff like that. And hopefully I'll be able to give you a, a more thorough examination of the motorcycle. Um, but I'm absolutely super, super stoked with it. I'm absolutely in love with it. And I'm really glad I didn't get the fairy nose. I'm sure someone's going to say in the comments below, I should have got the fairy nose, but they're not for me. They're not my cup of tea. It's the sort of bike, you know, when you shut the garage door, it makes you sad and you want to open the garage door again and cuddle it. <laughs> um, yeah, I am absolutely in love with how this bike looks. So thank you, Yamaha. You've made an absolute belter, belter of a motorcycle. Any houses, uh, right, that is just about it, I think. Um, I've not much got anything else to say at this point. So um, please do click that subscribe button if you want to see the full review once I've put that together. It will be in a couple of months, I'd have thought. I'm not sure exactly timeline-wise for that, but I need to get some miles under my belt and get used to the bike cycle more. Um, and if you did like the video, or you like the bike and all that sort of stuff, please do give the video a big old thumbs up. We like them, we like them a lot. If you don't like it, you don't like me, you don't like anything, you smell a cabbage and wee, you can always give it a little thumbs down. I really don't mind at all, not precious. Um, but please, please, please uh, drop in a comment below. If you've either got this bike, you want this bike, you've got the Yamaha XSR 900 in one of its other forms, or uh, maybe even the... the uh, other um, uh, cross-plane engines or even just the 765 let me know your thoughts if you've uh, been able to compare the two um yeah you ride safe take care and i shall catch you all in the next one uh, bye bye for now keep that bike rubber side down yeah you know you gotta keep that bike rubber side down